Hey, very warm welcome, everyone. Thanks so much indeed. Thanks for the kind invitation and thanks to the organizers for setting up this wonderful uh, workshop on data-driven methods for quantum dynamics and control for good reason as data is ultimately all we have. And indeed, this is precisely what this talk will be about when we have a look at what could be called a general theory of randomized benchmarking as joint work with um, these gentlemen um, here. As the subtitle of this workshop indicates, the success of quantum technologies demands a precise characterization and control of quantum devices. And indeed, that's very much true, as we cannot hope to enter a realm of quantum advantages that alone fault-tolerant quantum computers without such a precise characterization, whether we like it or not. And while this is obviously very important, I will try to make the point it's not a tedious effort, but there's a lot of fun mathematics coming into play in this endeavor. So the core question um, in the center of all this is um, how can we going into the lab and based on data find out whether the components have actually worked as anticipated? That's the question. And the overwhelming answer is, well, dude, please do randomized benchmarking. And indeed, randomized benchmarking robustly um, estimates um, error rates. So when you read fidelities or gate, uh, like quantities of quantum gates in papers, this is commonly what people have, have done. It is the plain vanilla scheme. It's ubiquitous to say the least. There are literally hundreds of papers on the subject. And we've just written a review on data-driven benchmarking and certification as um, stated here below, the, below this box. So it's robust. In fact, it's state preparation and measurement, that is SPAM robust, in that one cleverly prepares a state um, and then applies a, a random sequence of gates or circuits undoes the entire gate operation in the last step and then estimates the decay rate in the length of the sequence to estimate quantities such as the average gate fidelity. And spam robust means that the, the preparation at the beginning and the measurement and, and all that can be slightly messed up and one still reliably estimates the quality of the quantum. The first protocol of randomized benchmarking was an experimental paper, in fact, that um, already nicely presented basically all building blocks there. But to be fair, it did not quite provide a theoretical justification. At the same time, work by Emerson and others uh, did provide a theoretical justification, but was based on Ha random unitaries, Ha averages, which are not really practical or efficiently implementable. And the unification was done in this work here using efficiently in implementable so-called Clifford averages in work that also stressed the importance of resorting to group averages when estimating error rates in a data-driven fashion of quantum gates. That's the, the, the plain vanilla scheme, the, the, the Volkswagen of randomized benchmarking schemes, but there are lots of variants thereof. And for a while, it was kind of fashionable to, to introduce new schemes and, and, and variants to accommodate some practical or experimental needs. In, in, in some way, there is, say, real randomized benchmarking there is dihedral randomized benchmarking, monomial randomized benchmarking, C0 dihedral randomized benchmarking, complete randomized benchmarking, cross entropy benchmarking, and so on. And many others, in fact, uh, we are aware of no fewer than 35 schemes that can be seen as a bouquet of variants of the scheme. So in some way, our eyes were a little bit blurred and over the last two years or so, 
we have sat down to think of what could be seen a unified framework of randomized benchmarking. So as I said, there's like lots, 35 or so variants of the theme and the, and the status is not quite the same in all of them. There have been some heated debates on the precise interpretation of data with some disagreements, some loud shouting and confusion um, involved. And it was our intention to clean up things. This being a CM workshop, we aimed at a precise and mathematically rigorous basis for the quantum part, the actual protocol done in the lab, but also the classical post-processing, seeing what randomized benchmarking actually delivers at the end of the day. And then once such a framework has been established, which we have done, it can serve as a starting point to cook up new schemes equipped with the same rigor. And I might mention some of them if, if time allows. So what can the ingredients to a mother theorem, as we jokingly um, called it, be? So what is a randomized benchmarking protocol? What are all randomized benchmarking schemes for that matter? So it starts with input data. So we need a group as a subgroup of U2 to 12Q, so a Q qubit system in, in the lab. The paradigmatic example being the Clifford group, but you can take the, the Pauli group, dihedral group, or some exotic group of your, of your liking. Then you have to pick a notion of idealness somehow. Um, so it's a, a reference representation. And in most cases, this is just the standard circuit representation on density matrices, the thing the quantum computer should be doing. And you specify a P over M, and are capturing the final measurement at the end of the sequence, an initial quantum state that you prepare and feed in, a set of sequence, le sequence length of the scheme, and an end gate, one that's implemented after the global inverse of the whole procedure that can be computed as we have a group at hand and you can just do the group inverse. Most of the time, this end gate is nothing but the identity, but doesn't have to be interestingly. If interested, ask me um, why that is. That gives a nice handle on, 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 on things. The key thing that's provided by the actual quantum computer is the implementation map. So that's the real life. You, you can tell the quantum computer to implement some circuit and this will be done, but not quite perfectly. I had to break it in some way imperfect. And this imperfectness is modeled by the implementation um, map. Um, and um, it's kind of models some map from, from the group element to some quantum channel, so to a completely positive map, a super operator. And that's what we want to study. And the data we have at the end of the day are the outputs so or a list of probabilities associated with each measurement outcome, a sequence length, and a group element, of course. So what does this deliver? There is a hope, that's fair to say, folklore claim that after one has picked the group and all that, that these data are basically describing a linear combination of exponentials, where the decay of these decaying exponentials depends on the gates you implement. And by, by varying the, the sequence length, one can say something about the implementation map. So as long as the implementation is in some sense close to the reference representation, but then is this really true? And what does close mean? at the end of the day. So here's our take to the problem. It's a 60 pages paper and it's a short talk, so I will not be faithful to the methods, but the core idea is that the complicated randomized benchmarking procedure can be nicely rewritten in terms of convolutions of implementation maps. And we can rewrite the full Monty randomized benchmarking operator after some effort as an m-fold convolution, again, as a function from the group to super operator so that we can 
rewrite the probability data as a sandwiched m-fold convolution. The nice thing of having group structures is that we have a Fourier transform, not from groups to real numbers, but to super operators, with the frequency modes being the irreducible representations. That's a natural inverse, and the convolution property, meaning that the, the convolution, the full transform of convolutions becomes a product and so on. So we can take our randomized benchmarking data, plug in the full transform and its inverse and the convolution then becomes a power. Here's the mother theorem one. So consider, so a good way of closeness is the average diamond on distance of the real to the reference implementation. And if this is small enough, then one can guarantee for any implementation map that the randomized benchmarking data are indeed close to a linear combination of exponentials. So with an error that's exponentially small in this distance, so the folklore coin can be rigorously justified as long as there's no multiplicities in the standard implementation, which is um, a, a case that can be characterized in which we've done in full. So what is more, it doesn't only apply to the plain vanilla, but to, in fact, all randomized benchmarking scheme. This encapsulates the known schemes for a randomized benchmark that I've mentioned earlier and others. In that one can pick the respective group and all the ingredients to make this true for all of them. We also have a second mother theorem um, on how to make use of the data and how one can isolate the single decay rates using ideas of signal processing and rigorous post-processing. I have no time to go into detail here, but the point is that one can interpret classical data with error bounds also in a precise and rigorous fashion. So this encapsulates all randomized benchmarking schemes. Um, it can also serve as a basis for new schemes. We're just cooking up notions of analog randomized benchmarking for analog quantum simulators um, in, in a similar mindset. And there's a shadow estimation based on this. If interested, ask me about it. So 12 minutes into the talk, I promise to stick to Swiss time. So it's a good moment to look out and summarize what we have learned, if, if, if anything. So this talk, I set out to present what could be called a framework for randomized benchmarking that um, sets out to deliver a comprehensive understanding of this bouquet of the manifold quantum settings, quantum protocols and classical parts of randomized benchmarking, providing a, a overall framework but also providing a rigorous basis for new schemes for certifying quantum gates, quantum processes in a data-driven way, quite in the spirit of this workshop. This is part of a bigger program in our group on data-driven recovery of interesting quantum processes and the quantum technologies. We are just finalizing work on robust Hamiltonian learning together with our friends at Google AI, where we do data-driven recovery using super resolution and manifold optimization to learn a Hamiltonian from a given uh, concept class of Hamiltonians with hilarious outcomes. If interested, what that means, ask me about it. Um, but again, just staring at data and learning the Hamiltonian that is somehow in the lab in superconducting devices, but also in the context of efficient verification of quantum advantage schemes that are aiming at showing that quantum devices can do more than classical schemes. And there's the, the curious and interesting situation that sometimes these things, these devices do something interesting. They provide samples one cannot do classically efficiently to a good approximation. But at the same time, one can efficiently verify the correctness of the scheme. And then you go to the lab and say, I've done the right thing. What is the outcome? You do not know. You have to go to the lab, do the sampling. But sometimes you can verify the correctness of a quantum device, even if you cannot efficiently predict the outcome of the, of the device. This we've done for new schemes based on kind of cold atomic settings, if you want, but also just a couple of days ago with our friends at Xanadu on notions of Gaussian boson sampling. So sometimes you can verify the correctness that you cannot even efficiently predict concerning what comes out at the end of the day. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention. And I'm looking forward to the questions 
you might potentially have. Oh, yeah, and we are precisely at 15 minutes. Thanks. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Jens. Uh, yeah, at this point, if, if there are any questions.